2013 was a vital season for all of NASCAR. With the introduction of their new Generation 6 stock car, there was also quite a bit of change during the silly season heading into the 2013 year, with the most notable changes being Matt Kenseth and Joey Logano, both vacating their rides to join new teams for the 2013 season. People like Kurt Busch, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., and Roger Penske all faced drastic changes for the 2013 season as well. However, on one fateful late summer night in Richmond, all of these changes would be eclipsed by one event so big it changed the landscape and face of NASCAR for years to come. Spingate. September 7th, 2013, the last race before the chase at Richmond. Anticipation is mounting for the 400 lap event. Points leader Jimmy Johnson has been easily one of the best drivers all year, winning the Daytona 500 and maintaining the points lead for virtually the whole season up to this point. Jimmy, however, has seemed like he's been in cruise control as of late, with an average finish of 25th in the previous five races leading up into Richmond. This has allowed for second place points competitor Clint Boyer to close in on the points lead. Boyer, who is arguably coming off of one of the best seasons of his career, is looking to finally become a consistent championship competitor in 2013 with Michael Waltrip Racing. However, Boyer has not yet won a race in 2013, and coming into Richmond, the very race he won last year, is hoping to build some momentum that will carry him into the 10 race chase. Spring winner of the Richmond event in 2013 and Boyer's old teammate is third place points holder Kevin Harvick. Harvick, who has been very consistent all year and is currently in the last year of his contract with Richard Childress Racing, may be pursuing a new ride at season's end. The driver tied with Harvick third in points is Carl Edwards. Edwards, who broke a long winless streak with his win at Phoenix International Raceway earlier in the season, is looking to build some momentum heading into the chase where he hopes to claim his first championship. Meanwhile, Kyle Busch, who coming into this race is the most recent winner at Atlanta the previous week and is one of the most winningest drivers at Richmond, claiming the spring race in four consecutive seasons. He's looking for his fifth win of the season, which would place him as the number one seed for the chase. If he were to win at Richmond, he would be tied with the most wins on the season at five with Matt Kenseth. Kenseth, who moved from his old team, the number 17 Roush team, in pursuit for greener pastures, has taken over the iconic number 20 for Joe Gibbs Racing. Kenseth is trying for his second championship of his career, and a win tonight would give him a career-high sixth win on the season. Behind him in points is fellow 2000 Rookie of the Year competitor Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr., who currently sits seventh in points coming into Richmond, is the first driver not locked into the chase. However, all Dale needs to do to guarantee himself a chase berth is to finish 33rd or better, and no matter what, he will make the chase. Behind him is 8th in points, Joey Logano. Joey, who is at a new team in 2013, and has claimed a victory already this year at Michigan, he is solidly in the top 10 in points, and will be able to use bonus points for when the chase starts because of that win. Logano is relatively safe to make the chase as long as nothing catastrophic happens. The only thing he is racing for is to maintain those bonus points for his win, and to not have to rely on a wild card spot. Behind him in 9th is Greg Biffle, who is basically in the same spot as Logano. Though it is unlikely for him to miss the chase, it could happen, but it would need to take a catastrophe. Tenth in the standings, and the last driver in on points is Kurt Busch. Kurt, who is racing for the Denver-based Furniture Row Racing Team, is trying to help get this single car team into the chase for the first time. Although Kurt is in at the moment, any mistake could cost him his chase berth. Therefore, it is critical for Kurt to go out and perform tonight. Only six points behind him is Jeff Gordon. Gordon, who only made the chase last year by a singular point, is once again in a fight to the wire to try and make the chase. Gordon has only missed the chase once in his career back in 2005. And in 2013, if things don't go the right way, he could miss it for only the second time ever in his illustrious career. Behind him in 12th, 
is his teammate Casey Kane. Kane, who is locked in with two wins, is the only driver holding a wild card spot with two victories at the moment. Although that could change tonight, Kane can't fall out of the top 20 points and he can't fall out of a wild card position, making the only thing Kane is racing for tonight is to get into the top 10 in points to start the chase with an additional six points. 13th in points and holding the last chase spot with the second wild card berth is Martin Truex Jr. Truex claimed the victory this year at Sonoma and has been in a fight all season to keep himself in the second wild card spot. He has to hold off Ryan Newman, the winner from Indianapolis who comes into Richmond only five points behind him. A win tonight would solve either one of these drivers' problems in trying to make the chase as it would automatically leapfrog them into the second wildcard berth. However, they have to worry about one driver named Brad Kozlowski, one of the last drivers with a mathematical shot to make the chase. All Brad needs to do is win and have bad fortune be bestowed upon Martin Shrix Jr. and Ryan Newman for him to possibly steal the last chase berth tonight. 15 drivers vying for 12 chase berths with only seven of them previously locked in. The stakes couldn't be any higher. It starts without a lap of practice. The race to the chase at Richmond is green. The race goes green right after sundown, with Jeff Gordon and Kurt Busch on the front row. Gordon is confident that he can pull off a victory tonight and easily clinch himself a chase berth, while Kurt Busch believes he can do the same also. Gordon pulls away and leads the opening laps, gaining a bonus point for leading a lap. Kurt Busch fades to fourth in the opening run as Brad Kozlowski begins to charge his way up to second and begins to start stalking Jeff Gordon for the lead. The leaders will soon come up on the points leader Jimmy Johnson to lap. Johnson, who missed all of practice and qualifying to be present for the birth of his second child, had to go to the rear for a driver change and is struggling greatly with the handling of his car. Martin Truex Jr. and Ryan Newman are contently battling each other, even though as they run right now, with Gordon's victory, it would knock them out of the chase. However, things would change as coming to complete lap 50, Brad Kozlowski would take the lead from Jeff Gordon and begin to pull away. As Gordon loses a lead, he loses his chase spot and begins to fade through the field, dropping outside the top five. However, he would not fade nearly as fast as Joey Logano, who has fallen outside the top 20 and is at risk to lose his top 10 points position. Logano was relatively safe from falling from the top 10, but if he does have to rely on that wildcard spot, that would take it away from the Newman Truex battle, who are currently vying for that last spot. Things at the front would change again at lap 66 as Kurt Busch takes the lead from Brad Kozlowski. Kurt would lead all the way up to the first round of green flag pit stops, starting around lap 90. Lagana, who at the end of that run was in a free fall through the field, attempts a high risk strategy decision by pitting early in the cycle to try and take advantage of fresh tires to regain his lost laps to the leaders. The way this strategy is a success is if a caution comes out right when the cycle ends, guaranteeing Lagana on the lead lap. The way this strategy goes awry is if a caution comes out between the time Logano pits and the leader's pit, which could trap Logano two or even three laps down. Logano pits on lap 90, with Kurt Busch pitting five laps later. The cycle finally ends at around lap 97, with Brad Kozlowski retaking the lead and Logano back on the lead lap in the top 20. Shortly after pit stops, Matt Kenseth takes the lead from Kozlowski and begins to try and pull away. But only five laps later, Kurt Busch chases down Kenseth and retakes the lead he lost during the pit stops. As of this moment, 110 laps into the race, Joey Logano is still holding on to a top 10 points position, but by only three points over Jeff Gordon. Gordon, who is currently running 12th, is trying to race his way back into the top 10 to guarantee his chase spot. Logano, who is once again falling back fast, is hoping for a caution as the leaders inch close to lapping him once again. As the leaders come up to lap Logano, Kurt Busch nearly sees his race and chance at a chase end as he is put in a bad situation lapping between the 55 and 38. On lap 130, Kurt Busch once again laps Joey Logano, putting him one lap down, and now in the lucky dog position. 
Finally on lap 135, the first caution comes out for Debris in turn 3. About two laps before the caution came out, David Gillen was lapped by leader Kurt Busch, which knocked Logano out of the lucky dog position and trapping him one lap down for the time being. During the pit stops, Kurt Busch would lose the lead and fall all the way back to 6th. Jeff Gordon would gain three spots and move into the top 10 in the race and in points. Kurt losing the five spots on the pit lane would show his displeasure on the radio. Then, immediately take it three wide up the middle in the turn one. As the run went on and Kozlowski would claim the lead once again, Logano would be pushed back into the second wildcard spot. And Brad Kozlowski would only be 12 points away from taking a chase berth away from his teammate. However, even though Kozlowski is close to Logano in points now, Logano is running 26th. Therefore, something major still needs to happen to Logano for Brad to make it in. As the green flag run went on, Kurt Busch continued to work his way through the field as Jeff Gordon would once again fall, fade back outside the top 10. As Jeff Gordon would continue to fade and fall back outside the top 10 in points, he would say on the radio to his crew that his car was the worst it has been all race, and that the car was extremely tight. At the midway point of the race, Logano finds himself in the top 10 in points, but at risk of going a second lap down to Brad Keselowski. Jeff Gordon, meanwhile, rides in 15th with a fading short run car with Martin Truex Jr. two positions behind him. Joey would eventually go a second lap down to his teammate as Kurt Busch continued to chase down Keselowski for the lead. However, a caution would come out when David Shremi would go spinning off of turn four, saving Keselowski's lead and trapping Logano now two laps down and making it even more difficult to gain positions and points for the top 10 in points. During the pit stops, under caution, Kurt Busch's crew would finally perform and regain him the lead from Kozlowski. Gordon would maintain the position he came in at in 16th. Martin Shirk Jr. would restart three points behind Newman for the final wildcard spot. Newman, meanwhile, is hoping Logano runs well enough to gain himself the top 10 points position and not steal the wildcard position away from him. On the restart at lap 215, McMurray would hit a water bottle that was sitting low on the racetrack and launch it into the air. Kozlowski and Kurt Busch would continue to battle as Jimmy Johnson would have more problems as his alternator would start burning up. This would make Jimmy lose the points lead and stump his momentum even more heading into the chase. Then a huge moment in the race would occur. Jeff Gordon would pit under green from the 21st place position with problems. Gordon would not explain the reasoning as he called on the radio to Alan Gustafson that he was pitting claiming that he needed to come in. Gordon would change four tires and pull back onto the track appearing as if his hopes to make the chase have come to an end as Gordon would race by the leaders and put himself only one lap down. The crew reported the problem was a loose wheel on the right front. In order for Gordon to make the chase, he would need to pull the same miracle comeback he did the year prior. However, the situation looked bleak. On the other hand now, the situation was clear for Newman and Truex. They had to beat one another in points and hope Kozlowski didn't win the race and take the final chase berth from him. With 160 laps to go at Richmond, Kane and Kozlowski are in the final two wildcard spots with Kozlowski only being seven points out of the top 10. As the battle for the lead rages on to under 140 to go, Gordon with those fresh tires starts picking his way through the field again. Meanwhile, Newman holds down the last chase spot running ninth, taking it away from Truex. As soon as the battle for the lead starts to pick up again, a caution for debris on the backstretch is called to bring out the third yellow of the race. Coincidentally enough, the caution came out as soon as Jeff Gordon passed Brian Vickers to become the lucky dog driver, putting him now back on the lead lap. In less than 50 laps, Jeff Gordon had raced his way back onto the lead lap from two down with those fresh tires and a little help from NASCAR. During the yellow flag pit stops, Clint Boyer's crew does a phenomenal job and takes the lead from both Kozlowski and Bush. After the restart, Boyer begins to pull away from the field with the lead taking it away from Kozlowski and knocking Kozlowski back outside the chase. Once again, the battle is on between Newman and Truex, with Newman slowly working his way closer and closer to the front of the field as the race got later and later. Meanwhile, Truex 
has been riding around in the 17th position all race, and has now worked his way up to the 11th place position, trying to race his way past Newman in points, and grab his the last chase spot. With just over 100 laps to go in the race, Kane, who has worked himself now up to just outside the top 10 in the race, is now only 5 points from knocking Logano out of the top 10, and his teammate Gordon is only 7 back of the top 10. Newman still has 3 points over Truex as they run right now. With 80 laps to go, Gordon has worked his way up to the 16th place position, only 6 points back of the top 10. Kane, his teammate, is now tied with Gordon in points and is running 11th on track. Logano runs 25th and can't get any higher due to being trapped 2 laps down. Newman, who is currently 2 points ahead of Truex for the final chase spot, is running 7th while Truex runs 14th. Kozlowski has faded out of being an equation in the chase bubble in the last 20 laps due to a hard race with Kevin Harvick where Kozlowski attained some minor damage and overheated his tires. With under just 70 to go, business begins to pick up as Harvick and Kurt Busch begin to close on Boyer for the race lead. Meanwhile, Newman has fallen back to 8th place and Gordon has worked his way all the way up to 14th, pushing Martin Truex Jr. back to 17th. With 63 laps to go, green flag pit stops begin. And with 59 to go, the first of the top three cars pit with Clint Boyer and Kevin Harvick coming down the pit lane. Jeff Gordon follows the two leaders, and as soon as they hit the pit road, Jimmy Johnson blows a tire and brings out a caution, completely tossing this race upside down. Under incredibly lucky circumstances, the way timing and scoring came out, Jeff Gordon was scored as the lucky dog and was allowed to get back on the lead lap under the caution. All the drivers come in thinking that this was very likely their last stop. Many cars take the wave around to get back on the lead lap as we get ready to go green with now Carl Edwards leading the race. Now the picture for the chase is becoming clear. Gordon and Newman both have fast cars compared to the drivers in front of them. If Newman passes a few cars, he passes Truex in points. But if Gordon passes a few cars, he knocks Logano out of 10th in points and into a wild card, taking the last berth from Newman and Truex. Right now, Logano is trapped a lap down in 25th, with only one more position in David Gillen to gain. Now Truex and Newman race through the field, passing cars and gaining points. One lap, Newman passes Biffle. The next, Truex passes Stenhouse. The next, Newman passes Menard. Now Gordon, through the next 10 laps, gets up to 8th and pushes Logano out into the wild card. Now Newman knows what he needs to do. Win. In probably one of the most impressive drives to finish a race, Newman carves through Menard for 3rd, tracks down the dominant car of the day, Kurt Busch, for 2nd, and sets his sight on Carl Edwards with 25 to go. If Newman pulls this off, he knocks Logano out of the chase at the beginning of the night. It would take an incredible scenario to have Logano completely miss the chase. Now it's happening. Truex is now told with 20 laps to go to not let Gordon by, and Gordon is trying to gain insurance points. Newman needs to track down Edwards to get into the chase. Ryan was told in July of 2013 that he would be let go from the team at Stuart Haas. The team throughout the summer didn't lay down. They kept fighting with a win at Indy. And now with a drive to make the chase, that would be one of the greatest comeback feats in chase cut line history. All he has to do is pass Carl Edwards. As Tony Stewart watches on with 11 laps to go, Newman applies the pressure. The drive to make the chase has been complete. Everything the 39 team had been fighting for has been fulfilled. The story that this team and this night has been for. Gordon and Newman, the incredible drives that these two drivers went through in the last 100 laps, trying to come back through adversity and through hardship, is finally paying off. Newman is going to drive his way to the chase and Jeff Gordon is going to squeak his way in over Logano by only two points. But then. Spin on the floor. Trouble Boyer. Clint Boyer. Caution flag is out. Things change again. Wow. At first, the replay shows that maybe Dale Jr. had turned the 15. But with no second view and now the concentration in the field pitting, nobody can tell what happened. 
Many people take two tires, and Newman drops back along with Gordon. The point shovel as chaos engulfs the cut line with five to go. Now Paul Menard leads the field. The cut line coming to the green is a single point between Gordon and Logano, the same deficit Gordon made the chase with last year. Newman needs to go from fifth to first in only three laps to get the last berth, and Gordon to not get past. Logano, however, takes the wave around, put himself in position to be able to pass more cars for points. Three cars that Logano can pass for points, and three laps decide the cut line. Edwards beats Menard on the start, and drives away to victory. Newman can't get to the lead as Gordon falls out by one point and Truex barely skirts in in front of Newman. And with that, the chase field is set. 12 drivers ready to race for 10 races to decide the championship. Many of the incredible storylines about comebacks between Jeff Gordon and Ryan Newman are stumped. Martin Shrex Jr. holds on to his chase spot and Joey Logano will keep his three bonus points heading into the first race at Chicagoland. Controversy already begins to fill the air as discussions swirl over Carl Edwards possibly jumping the start. However, the wind still stands, Edwards does a backflip, and the commentators sit in silence as they try to take in what exactly happened in the last 10 laps. The last wildcard spot is determined in a tiebreaker, with Truex getting it over Newman. The difference of emotions is showed on TV between the joy of Logano and Truex and the disappointment of Ryan Newman. Interviews and congratulations get underway as reporters talk to Truex and Logano, who less than 20 minutes ago were all but dead in the water to make it until the late race caution. After victory lane interviews and a commercial break, we return with a review of the replay of the incident that changed the complexion of the chase with Dale Jr. and Clint Boyer. It's quickly realized that Boyer was never touched by Jr. and that he sell spun off the corner. Then Alan Bestwick says, so the Clint Boyer spin basically created circumstances that allowed his Michael Waltrip racing teammate Martin Truex to get in because the pit stops, you heard Ryan Newman talk about how Carl Edwards got four tires and got off pit road ahead of him. And the speculation begins. Also at this time, second place could never beat first back to the line on restarts, which is what Edwards did. If NASCAR had black flag in the 99, it would once again change the outcome of the chase with everyone in points moving up one spot. After more interviews and commercials, nearly 20 minutes after the race had concluded, ESPN placed this on the broadcast. Then this interview. Well, Clint, we just uh, watched some of the replays and we heard the radio. And people that hear that radio, somebody asking you if your arms hurt or if the car is getting hot, they're going to want to know, did you spin on purpose to help your teammate? No, I think we had a flat tire or something. I mean, we went from leading the race and got back there. And I mean, they were driving off from us. Um, I got down in there, it kept getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And then the 88 got in there, and, and by the time I got back to the gas, he got into me, and I had so much wheel in it, it just snapped around. But it just sucks. I mean, the whole weekend was was looking good. We led, uh, got caught in the pits. That's the third week in a row we were leading and had a shot, at legitimate shot at, at win, and, and um, just got caught in the pits again. It wasn't our night. Uh, you never want to be, you know, that guy, and, and unfortunately uh, changed some things up there at the end. I'm super proud of, of Patty and everybody for giving me another great race car that's capable of winning. And, you know, we got to get this bad luck behind us. But uh, nonetheless, we're, we're running well, and I feel like we're still, you know, contending, um, you know, a car capable of contending for a championship. 
And it is a night for celebration. You make the chase again with this team. Kind of hard to celebrate with all this stuff going on, but, um, you know, you'll, we'll get this behind us and, and, and go on. Um, you know, it's been a long year. It's crazy to think that all this comes down to the end every year here at, at Richmond, but it does. A um, bunch of cars racing back there for, for everything. Um, you know, it's it's unfortunate that some, some good cars had to lose this deal because, you know, they're plenty capable of winning a championship. I mean, I'm telling you, in this sport right now, I think 14 to 15 cars had a legitimate shot given a role or whatever to win a championship. But it wasn't our night again. Hopefully, it'll be our night soon. Then this interview with Dale Jr. makes the situation look even worse. Yeah, and that spin by Clint Boyer cost uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s teammate Jeff Gordon a chance to get in a chase. Jr., you were behind the 15. Uh, what did you see? Uh, he just uh, spun right out. It's the craziest thing I ever saw. The thing just came right around. Um, he got, we were going into the 3-3 three, three and uh, 4, and, and I don't know if they could put up his brakes and his gas. Uh, we got all that uh, technology, and uh, but he was hemming around on the brakes and jer jerking the car around, <laughs> and then the thing just spun out. It was crazy. I don't know what was going on, but uh, he was right there. I almost run into him, so I'm just glad we were, in, we were able to get out of there with no trouble. Controversy is being the run rampant throughout the NASCAR community. As more and more of it continued to flare up, and now evidence of a similar situation between Logano and the 38 team adds even more chaos to an out-of-control situation that NASCAR needed to contain. The following day, NASCAR announced that it was reviewing the events from the previous night and that a statement would be made when a decision was reached. By Monday, NASCAR launched a full-blown investigation on the whole situation involving Michael Waltrip Racing. On the same Monday, Ryan Newman announced his 2005 14 driving plans by saying he will be driving for Richard Childress Racing. In his statement, Newman still expressed displeasure over the events at Richmond by saying it's one of the hardest things he's ever gone through in his 30-year career. Later on that day, NASCAR made their announcement. MWR was busted for actions detrimental to stock car racing. All three cars, the 15, the 55, and the 56, penalized with 50 driver and owner points. NASCAR fined all MWR teams 50 driver and owner points and suspended indefinitely team vice president and manager Ty Norris for violating section 12-4 of the rulebook. The team was also fined $300,000 and all crew chiefs for the team were put on probation till the end of the year. With all that, Ryan Newman was now in the chase, and all the benefits Martin Truex gained from the race manipulation were erased. Everyone thought that this whip mess was all over, until on Wednesday of that week, Rick Hendrick, the car owner to Jeff Gordon, made the claim that Jeff Gordon, his driver, was robbed of a chase spot. Many people had forgotten about the whole Logano-Gordon race and how Logano had almost been out of the chase and Gordon was in as well. The MWR cars had also organized a plan to have their cars pull off the track to give points to Logano on the restart to help him get ahead of Gordon and ensure the last wildcard spot went to Truex. Also, many had forgotten about the controversial talks that were happening between the Penske and front row teams trying to have the 38 let the 22 by. Also on that same Wednesday, as Michael Waltrip was defending his organization on the race hub, most of his sponsors were reevaluating their relationship with the team and if they wanted to continue supporting the organization. Also on Twitter, Martin Shrooks Jr., who was taking just as much flack for the situation as anyone else on the team, claimed that he was unaware of the situation that was going on at the time and that he just wanted to move on from everything. On Thursday, Gordon showed even more frustration with NASCAR's Monday decision after more evidence of Boyer and Vickers came out showing them letting Joey Logano buy on the restart, giving Logano two more points. NASCAR also reported that it was now investigating the negotiations between the number 38 and 22 teams. Then, on Friday, as practice was beginning for the first chase race at Chicago, NASCAR ruled that Jeff Gordon would be put in the chase and that front row and Penske would be all placed on probation through the end of the year. Gordon would be added as an unprecedented 13th car in the chase, and then all investigations would be concluded.
Michael Waltrip Racing would never recover from the events that took place, as Napa would leave the team as a sponsor, and the team eventually shut down at the conclusion of 2015. Martin Shrex Jr. was let go from the team at the end of 2013 due to no sponsorship, and moved over to the number 78 team, the same team that Kurt Busch raced his way into the chase with in 2013. However, the, the pairing struggled through much of the 2014 season until 2015, where Truex helped lead the team on a daring championship run and helped claim the team's first victory since Regan Smith in 2011. Since MWR was shutting down at the end of 2015, Toyota decided to dump support into the number 78 team and closely affiliate them with the top Toyota team at the time, Joe Gibbs Racing. Truex throughout the years of 2016 to 2020 has been a top level driver, winning on an average about five races a year and being a consistent championship threat since. Truex also in that time has claimed the 2017 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. Clint Boyer, his teammate at the time of the Spingate incident, hasn't found the success post-controversy that Truex has had. Boyer left the MWR team when it shut down in 2015 and spent 2016 driving for H. Scott Motorsports, another team that would be shutting down at the end of that season. Boyer, however, did get a contract with Stuart Haas to replace the retiring Tony Stewart, but since Spingate, he has only claimed two career victories and has not really been a championship factor in the last four years. Ryan Newman left his team at Stuart Haas in 2013 and moved to the number 31 at Richard Childress Racing. Newman didn't get a win until 2017. But in the year following the Spingate incident, Newman finished second in the championship to the car he drove for the previous year, Kevin Harvick, who moved to the number 39 team, which was later renumbered to the four, and he claimed his first championship in 2014. Newman is now at Roush in the number six and survived a horrific crash in the last lap of this year's Daytona 500. Joey Logano continued to have success with his Penske team, winning the 2015 Daytona 500 and the 2018 Cup Championship. The team is still championship caliber to this day. Jeff Gordon would go on to give a minor championship run in 2013 and be a serious threat for the title in 2014. He would later announce that 2015 would be his last season and pull one last run for the title, almost pulling off the drive for five in 2015. He now works as a broadcaster for Fox's portion of NASCAR's coverage. Even though this did happen seven years ago, I still have my questions regarding the situation that occurred at Richmond. Why was Logano still allowed in the chase? Nothing against Joey Logano, but when the caution came out, he wasn't in the chase. And the caution practically saved his chase hopes. They didn't need to make a 13th spot for Gordon. They should have done what they did with Newman and Truex and swapped the two. What adds even more insult to injury is that Logano even retained his three points bonus for the chase, which in turn actually helped him finish one position higher in standings in 2013 by beating out Biffle for ninth in points. The debate about what NASCAR should have done for the whole spin gate situation goes on to even this day with how the penalty should have played out and everything involving the Logano, Gordon, Shurex, Newman situation. But one thing is for certain, this event is by far one of the biggest events in the last 20 years in NASCAR history, and even to this day, the effects from it can still be felt in the NASCAR world.